The king has walked in and they have to respect it. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein, but he offered to suck my p in front of all my people. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times just to protect my integrity because P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. What do you expect? The guy married on what do that mean the product was? Martin tried to put me in my first dress. We were both invited to an Illuminati thing. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. Cat Williams is exposing everyone in the industry, from Tiffany Haddish to Kevin Hart, from Steve Harvey to Harvey Weinstein. He's sharing the dark side of the industry and telling the truths that everyone has been hiding. So let's get into it. I don't know what happened to Cat Williams, but he switched up because he decided to turn on everyone in the industry. I'm talking about Steve Harvey, Kevin Hart, P. Diddy, so many people that he has worked with and he's now sharing their dirty secrets. He went for Tiffany Haddish, Martin Lawrence, which actually I saw Martin Lawrence at a comedy show. It was like a 20 bucks show and he just like went on stage and then Ali Wong went on stage and it was wild. It was so LA, but um, Cat Williams explains that he feels safe on this podcast to share his truth. Cat said, I have watched all these lowbrow comedians come onto this podcast and disrespect you in your face and tell you straight up lies. So this was Cat Williams' moment to set the record straight. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I... Now, a lot of people are looking at Kat in disbelief because he's going against a lot of people that he's typically working with, and it kind of seems like he's going against his own people. But he says race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. All of these deviants are catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It doesn't matter if you're Diddy or whoever you are, all the lies will be exposed. Now, I want to explore what Kat is saying here, but I also want to keep in mind that we can't go on his word completely. You know, we're living in the real world. There are multiple sides to every story, and it doesn't help when he's like, you know, referring to Kim K as a and calling people certain names. It makes you question if he's like just really upset with how he's been treated in the industry or if there is some truth here, which I think there's both, a little bit of both. What do you expect? The guy married on like what? Oh, Lord. Like, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I mean, married her because she was one. Not he didn't know. He understood that he wanted that. He courted that. That's what he wanted to base his family on. But maybe you got, got a good heart, though. I know what you're going to say. Don't you say it, Kat. Don't you say it. I'm going to move the conversation. If what I'm saying is not correct, then how does she end up with Pete Davidson? I mean, it happens all the time. And what if you weren't even good enough for Pete and he leaves you? What do that mean the product was? Now, everyone has their opinions on Kim, but let's get into what he has to say about Kevin Hart, because Kevin Hart is so beloved by everyone. Well, Kat claims there's a reason for that because he says that Kevin Hart is an industry plant and claiming that his success has not been organic because he got movie deals before he even like got to LA. No one had a memory of Kevin Hart working in the comedic scene and having a sold out show. He said, have we heard of a comedian that came to LA in his first year in LA? He had his own sitcom on a network show and had his own film called Soul Plane. No, we've never heard of that before, that person, or since that person. Kevin just did a documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. So how simultaneously was he here in LA doing the same thing? It didn't happen. So he's almost trying to say that like Kevin made some deal with the devil and then got this position in the industry where he just kind of came out of nowhere and he brought Tiffany Haddish in with him. But Kevin hasn't just sat here and taken it from Cat Williams. He has actually responded before in the past. They've had beef for a while. And maybe Cat is just jealous of Kevin's success, but this is what Kevin had to say. My frustration with Cat Williams comes from, you keep pointing at Hollywood. Hollywood this, the white man, this, this, and this. When do you take responsibility for your action? You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. You f***ed off promo shoots. You became a risk to the studios, which is why the studios stopped f***ing with you. Why was he a risk? He chose drugs. Oh, okay. Take responsibility for what you chose and say, you know what, I gotta fix me, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna stand up for comedy. Mm -hmm. 
Now, maybe Kevin has a point there. I mean, if Kat isn't showing up to work, then they're going to hire someone who will. But Kevin isn't the only person that Kat has had issues with because he's also had issues with Kedrick the Entertainer. Now, Kedrick is a fellow comedian, and supposedly Kat claims that Kedrick stole one of his bits verbatim that he performed in the 90s. After Kat saw Kedrick go out and perform his joke, he said, he thought that I was a no-name comedian that he could just take this joke and nobody would know. He went on to say, we found out he can't sing, he can't dance, he can't write jokes. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, you can't even find them on Netflix or on Tubi. Now here's a clip breaking down the joke and how Kat feels about Kedrick's performance. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up? He thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. <laughs> Now I can see the similarities, there's not a lot of words, so we can't really go off the verbatim part, but you know, it's the same joke. But of course, Kat took this moment to go and attack Kedrick on his weight, and because of his stand-up comedy routines, claiming they're not original and they're not even funny. Kedrick responded saying that it's an interesting time now. People get on these blogs and they just start spewing stuff that's not even factual. I am who I am and I stand on that for sure. Now we can't talk about Kevin Hart and we're not going to talk about Tiffany Haddish, because Kat has had a similar relationship to these two, just kind of discrediting their work. And maybe he's right, I'm not here to say he's right or wrong, but he's saying that Tiffany Haddish is only famous because she bangs white guys. Okay. Kat said Tiffany got famous off of someone else's writing and anyone would have earned a critical acclaim reading of the girl's trip script, which Kat claims that he saw way back in 2004. He added Tiffany's been in comedy since she was 16, but claims no one knows her jokes. Then there's this. She ain't done a tour yet. She ain't done a special. She's not proven the ability to tell jokes back to back for an hour to nobody. It just kind of seems like Kat's a little bit bitter, but he's claiming that uh, Brad Pitt may be the reason why Tiffany is out here getting all of these moments on screen. Seems like Kat just wants to be a, as big of a star, but he's so bitter. You know, we don't really like Tiffany Haddish on this channel after what she did with those young kids. We talked about it before. I believe that video got like age restricted, so like <laughs> it was problematic. But here's a clip of her responding. I'm to LA. I've been doing shit. I was on That's So Raven. I was on my. I was on all these shows. Like I was on a lot of the white people TV shows, the black people TV shows, I used to be on Dance 360. I've been out here. I've been telling jokes since 1996. This said, oh, they wouldn't let her perform in the comedy store. That's true. They wouldn't let me perform on the white nights in the comedy store, but I performed on all the black nights. They wouldn't let me perform on the white nights at the improv, but I performed on all the black and Latino nights. Now that Tiffany has said her piece, let's talk about what Kat says about Kanye West. He says Kanye was the weird guy in the beginning, and people shouldn't be surprised by what's happened these years since becoming a household name. Quote, the dude started a church and kept cussing. Nobody in a black church said nothing. You would have thought all the pastors would have came up and said, you can't be a gospel artist, but they didn't. And he also brings up P. Diddy. This is where he eventually goes off on Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson, but essentially he's saying like, you know, Kanye thinks he's so almighty godly, but in fact, he's just one of those on the other side that Kat is describing, which sounds like the evil side, the Illuminati side. He's not making it very clear. What do you think about Kanye rant? What's going on with Kanye? From a distance, obviously, I don't know how well you know Kanye. I don't know if you've been around Kanye, but from a distance, what, 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 what do you suspect is going on? I suspect that we're pretty awful people. If we say that somebody got a mental illness and then we watch what they do. If you say somebody got special needs, then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable like everybody else? Because, I mean, what are we reacting to? What are we reacting to? You're the one that put him in a position 
where he thought he was God and could call himself Jesus. And you know what I told a guy that writes musical lyrics that he was a genius. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's like so what? Kat has a point there. I'm pretty sure society has declared Kanye West mentally ill. So why are we surprised every time we see him behaving a certain way? It's like kind of like watching a train wreck over and over again and people get off on it. But one person I was super surprised to hear Cat Williams bring up was Harvey Weinstein, saying that they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the Me Too movement. But he offered to suck my in front of all of my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, it's three other black guys there. Huh? I told him no. What do y'all do? Which I've heard a lot of Harvey Weinstein stories we've heard from the victims, but I don't think I've ever heard of like a male victim. Like this is the first time I've ever heard anything like this. They've canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there. It's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did. To <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. Steve Harvey is a big deal, and he's a household name, he's on the game shows, and you wouldn't really think he's problematic, but Katz had his moments with him. Very similar to Kedrick claiming that he had plagiarized the premise of Mark Curry's sitcom Hanging with Mr. Cooper for the Steve Harvey show. He was actually kind of mean to Steve Harvey, which I like Steve Harvey, but he said that there are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year, not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good and looks like Mr. Potato Head. Cat also claims that Steve claims that he had stopped doing stand-up because he had seven TV shows, but when he stopped doing stand-up, he did not have seven TV shows. He got into a comedy battle with Cat Williams in front of 10,000 people and he lost. And uh, he claims that, <sighs> Oh my God, he was actually bald and that was a wig. Cat alluding that he embarrassed Steve so badly that he couldn't show his face and stand up again. I don't know if you guys have heard of Steve Harvey's homeless story, but Cat is calling it BS, saying that that is his story. Saying that Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago and he was making $3,000 in cash a show, doing five shows a week. So he's accusing Steve of trying to rewrite history, make his past seem like it was way worse than it actually was, to gain sympathy yet that just wasn't the case and he's claiming that i had lived that life you never did because he has seven tv shows see the reason i stopped was because i seven shows on tv all at once the only problem is when he stopped stand up he didn't have those seven tv shows he stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the championship of stand up comedy with one cat williams in detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because cat williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig and i went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore Imagine him coming to tell you another story. Now, Ricky Smiley is another person that Cat Williams decided to go in on. Now, Cat claims that he put in his contract that he wouldn't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Pretty much, they had an opportunity to work together, and I guess Ricky Smiley and like Tyler Perry, these men, they, you know, do drag essentially when they act and Cat is trying to say that Ricky Smiley isn't funny unless he's in a dress. He can only play a woman, trying to say that his acting skills aren't there. But he also went on to make a comment saying that his like child had died like right around this time, and then he went on like speaking about it. I'm not entirely sure where in this timeline, but he's trying to at least suggest that maybe this man like sacrificed his kid and then went on the air and lied all about it. What he told everybody was Cat Williams. Eh, eh, don't nobody know who he is. I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven said everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. Why would you put that in your, put his, in your contract, Cat? That's where he's the, a believable actor. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. They play good women, and I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. So that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that, you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to play, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So That he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. 
Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Now let's get to the part where he brings up people like Diddy and Michael Jackson. He said, quote, I came into this business saying I was going to expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things. Because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where I draw the line. They offered him 50 million and he turned it down. Who going to turn down 50 million? Now I've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times, four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. Oh, See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say them yeah, so I need, freely. Kid, kid, I need, kid, I need no. We've heard a lot of rumors about Diddy sleeping with other people in the industry and pressuring other people. Usher, Justin Bieber. So many more people. We've talked about this in past videos, so I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to pressure Kat as well. And it kind of seems like Kat is just a little bit upset with everyone in the industry and, you know, I guess with the lack of bluntness, like calling out people when they're not doing well, not performing well, or screwing you over. Like Michael Blackson, he called him out at one point saying that this comedian who's like coming out here with this like fake African accent and wearing like this attire, he just isn't getting booed enough, which I think is maybe a little bit insensitive. I mean, Michael Blackson said, Cat Williams is a very smart slur slur. He took shots at the top 10 comedians alive today so we can all respond and make him relevant again, which is a good point. Most comedians don't get booed enough. I mean, this is how you end up with a Michael Blackson who's a real African doing a fake African accent. Okay, move, don't. Uh, this guy is mad at me. All I did was give him the best advice of his life. Remember, he was wearing dirty dashikis. Dashikis. And I told him he needed to dress to be in the position that he's trying to say that he's in. And if you're the African king of comedy, sir, there's actually comedians in Africa doing comedy. If you're going to say that, you got to go to Africa and get a school, dude. Everybody got, you, you got to put in some work. And this does kind of seem like a strategy. I mean, when you're going for such big names, people who are going to trend, people like Joe Rogan. He said Joe Rogan failed to have comedians on his show. If you were a comedian that cussed, you were ridiculed by the mainstream comedy gist. That would be like me on Joe Rogan. Joe does not want me there. I need to be on Shannon. Joe got six comedians that never been funny and he wants to push it out. That's how it is. Now, I don't know if Joe saw this interview or what, but he put out a tweet saying, I love Kat. He's one of my favorite comics. I'd love to have him on we talk about him all the time if he's down i'll make it happen so he invited him on that show and if this was some kind of like strategy to get some press it's i mean it's doing its job because now he's probably going to go on joe rogan's show um and that's how it was for blue comedy mm -hmm. um if you were a comedian that cussed you were ridiculed by the mainstream comedy mm -hmm. geist that would be like me being on joe rogan joe don't want me on there i need to be on shannon joe joe got six comedians that never been funny he want to push out <laughs> 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 but that's really how it is now, I'm excited to talk to you guys about Ludacris because that's where we hear a little bit about the Illuminati. So when talking about his relationship with Ludacris, he says there was a crossroads where we both were invited to an Illuminati thing and it had to be one or the other of us and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us. We were equal. One of us had to cut off all the hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing anymore with the points. And the next person, they said they were going to get 200 million because they were going to pay them 10 million to do a movie. I guess 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be Ludacris and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. Ludacris responded to Cat Williams in a video freestyle he posted to Twitter. In it, he rapped that he had never been Illuminati and that addiction's on the rise. <gasps> Calling Cat Williams a drug addict, which we've heard a few people say at this point. So there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing and it had to be one or the other of us and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were gonna pay him 10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. Now, one person ended up with a light-skinned, ugly-faced wife that's never done... 
I have to admit, I love how all these people are responding and the fact that Ludacris came out with like a rap against Cat Williams. I mean, that is a moment. As I mentioned earlier, I recently saw Martin Lawrence, like unexpectedly, I did not plan it. And uh, of course, Cat Williams has his Martin Lawrence story is saying, Martin tried to put me in a dress when he had to go on his hiatus. He told me, Cat, when I come back, I need you. You are my young partner. You're my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that you'll be in my next movie. It'll be me and you. He said he got the script Big Mama House 2. And when Martin tried to put him in a dress, he was not going to do it. I mean, but you know, the, the, some of these people. Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Cat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner. You my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We're going to do it together. We're going to do some buddy cop. I said, Martin, you got my motherfucking word. My name. Since the airing of this podcast, there's been a lot of criticism on Shannon for having Cat Williams on and entertaining his ideas. Shannon has gone out saying, I'm not a journalist. I'm not here to get the truth. I'm here to get these people's truth and to hear them out, which I totally respect. I think there are multiple truth system situations. Of course, when it comes to like law and things like that, we get to the bottom of it. But like, you know, Cat Williams may have had his experience. Maybe he was high half the time. So he's got a different perspective. But I actually respect that Shannon's like allowing him to speak. And if there aren't, you know, if it's not true, if there are falsehoods, people will correct them. And that's exactly what all these people did. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Let's go ahead and open a P.O. Box package item. It looks like this one is from Sensory Soaps, which is in Arizona, which I'm so excited about. I just moved into this place, so I don't have like a lot of things. And actually, another person sent me soap too. And I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. I could use this. Oh my God, I'm already reacting to this. I have to react. Like, what is going on here? My logo on a soap. What? Like, is it on it or is it like, it's like on the soap, I think, like printed. And look at that. That is so, I've ne I've literally never seen anything like this in my life. Like what is going on here? I, I need to read this letter. Sensory Soaps. Hello Sloan, I've been a devoted follower of yours for a couple of years. I love watching your videos while I craft for my small business or even when I want to tone out the world while I'm shopping at the store. Honestly, same. Your thoughtful discussions on real life topics have become consistent and anticipated part of my routine. I love that. I want to send you a little something as a big thank you in this package is a shea butter soaps with your logo on each of it. Each soap is made with shea butter and vitamin E. I hope you love them as much as I love creating them. Your audience can get a custom soap themselves and get 15% off by using code Sloan17 as l-o-a-n-17 it's an etsy shop called sensory soaps thank you so much sabrina like this oh my god there's a little one there's a little one this is like truly like how do i how do i ever use soap like this like there's no like i love like my logo of things and i need like a shelf in my studio where i just have like all these things you guys have sent me of like my logo because this is amazing thank you so much and i'll see you guys in a new video soon bye guys